Microcontrollers are amazing components. Almost in every electronic device you see around, there is a microcontroller in it like a beating heart. Because of that, we must get to know microcontrollers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start learning and using microcontrollers practically and I will answer 8 key questions about microcontrollers to help you get started. From now on, I will do microcontroller based projects on this channel, so this video is a prerequisite for some of upcoming videos. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. We are here to get answers to questions about microcontrollers. So, the first question can be the microcontroller itself. Question number one, what is a microcontroller? A microcontroller, also called an MCU or microcontroller unit, is an electronic chip. It's a small computer on a single VLSI integrated circuit that can execute codes and commands you write for it. A microcontroller contains components like CPUs, memories, timers, programmable I.O., peripherals, etc. In short, a microcontroller is a chip that can be programmed to do what you want. You can configure every single GPIO pin on a microcontroller to turn on or off in exact moment you define for it. Let's see some examples. These ICs are PIC MCUs, these are AVRs and these are STM32 microcontroller chips, each of which has its own characteristics, benefits and drawbacks and of course each of them needs special tools and software. I will talk more about these differences later in this video. You may have heard of microprocessors, right? Sometimes my students ask me about the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller. This is a good question. Question number two, what is the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor? These two things are quite different. In short, there is at least one microprocessor inside a microcontroller along with other stuff like RAM, RAM, GPIO, serial communication interfaces, timers, etc. In fact, a microcontroller is a chip that can operate alone with a few external components, but a microprocessor needs much more external components and ICs like RAM and ROM chips to become operational. More external components means more cost, a larger size, more power consumption, and much more complexity. Now that the difference between a microcontroller and microprocessor become clear, you may ask me for reasons to learn microcontrollers. Question number three. Why do I need to learn microcontrollers or why microcontrollers are so important? There are many reasons to learn microcontrollers. Here I will mention four main reasons from my own point of view. Reason number one, using microcontrollers makes things easier. Even though learning a microcontroller or a programming language is relatively difficult, it will make many problems easy to solve after learning them. After learning microcontrollers, you will prefer to make projects using microcontrollers instead of basic components, even a simple blinking LED. Reason number two, using MCUs makes some projects possible. Electronic projects these days are mostly based on modules like GSM module, Bluetooth, LCD, GLCD, etc. Most of these modules can't operate without commands from processors or microcontrollers. So, using these modules in your projects without a microcontroller is almost impossible. Reason number three, small size and low price. Microcontrollers are much smaller and cheaper compared to any other computer system. If you intend to use a computer system in your project, using a microcontroller will be a good choice. Reason number four, low power consumption. It is very important, especially in a battery powered device that needs to last for a long period of time. Microcontrollers consume much less power compared to any other computer system. These are main reasons for learning microcontrollers. Now that we are combined to learn microcontrollers, the next question is question number four. Where should I start from? In my opinion, the very first step in learning microcontrollers is to select the MCU family you are going to learn. There are a lot of MCU families on the market like MSP413, 
PIC AVR 1851, STM32 ARM series, etc. Here you may ask question number 5. What is the difference among different MCU chips and MCU families? There are a lot of differences among different MCUs. Here I am going to mention 9 of them. Difference number 1. The cost. Some microcontrollers are expensive and some are cheap. This is one of the most important factors in selecting right microcontroller for a project. Difference number 2. The package. Most of microcontrollers are available only in DIP packages or only in SMD packages. But you can find some microcontrollers which are available in both SMD and DIP packages. Difference number 3. Memory size and type. Usually MCUs have several memory types, for example RAM, Flash and E2P RAM are the most common memory types in MCUs. It is obvious the more memory a microcontroller has, the better. Microcontrollers with large memory size are expensive though. Difference number 4. CPU bit width. Another difference is in their CPU bit width. You can find 8 bit, 16 bit, 32-bit and even 64-bit wide microcontrollers on the market. These numbers shows quantity of bits a CPU can process at a time or in a single clock pulse. The wider the CPU width, the better and of course the more expensive. Difference number 5. Max clock speed. Max clock speed differ in different microcontrollers. For example, AVR microcontrollers can operate at a maximum frequency of 60 MHz, while some STM32 microcontrollers can operate at more than 400 MHz. It goes without saying that more frequency means more CPU power and of course more price. Difference number 6. GPIO pins. GPIO pin count is one of the most important factors in selecting right MCU for a microcontroller based project. For example, this Atini 13 AVR microcontroller has 6 GPIO pins while this STM32F030 F4P6 microcontroller has 13 GPIO pins. I mean you can connect more external devices to this STM32 compared to this AVR. Difference number 7. Interfaces it supports. Each microcontroller supports a few protocols like USART, I2C, SPI, etc. and a few input type like digital input, analog input, external interrupts, you name it. It is different on different microcontrollers. Difference number 8. Sensitivity to noise. Almost all microcontrollers are sensitive to noise, but the amount of this sensitivity is different for different microcontrollers. Usually deep packaged microcontrollers are less sensitive to noise. Difference number 9. Method to setup and tools needed to configure. Each MCU family has its own programmer software, programmer device and compiler software. To work with a particular MCU family, you have to learn a specialized software. So, at this stage, we are facing next question. Question number 6. Which MCU family is the best option to start with? There is no special rule for selecting your very first MCU family, but I recommend starting with a deep packaged MCU. Deep packaged MCUs don't need PCB and you can run your first projects on a breadboard. This will help you improve your microcontroller and programming skills very quickly. In addition, a deep packaged MCU resists noise much better compared to SMD packaged MCUs. This will guide you through your first steps on your journey. On the other hand, I recommend starting with an easy microcontroller. An easy to learn microcontroller will motivate you to continue learning microcontrollers. Since process of setting up and configuring microcontrollers is very similar, learning an easy microcontroller will help you to learn difficult microcontrollers easily. I think PIC or AVR are good options. I started with AVR and I think it was a good choice. It has deep packages and it is super easy to learn. Now is the time to answer next question. Question number 7. How do I set up a microcontroller?
In order for a microcontroller to work, we need to set it up and program it. This process is common among all microcontroller families. You need a computer and a compiler software installed on it to write codes into it and make an executable file. You also need a programmer device and software on this computer to operate this programmer device, which I call it a programmer software. Sometimes the executable file is called .hex file or .hex file. This software is usually called an IDE or Integrated Development Environment. The process starts here. In first step, we have to write some codes here on this compiler software and then make an executable file from codes using this compiler software. Then we have to load hex file or executable file on the programmer software. The main job of programmer software and programmer device is to transfer executable file from this computer into this chip. This process is called flashing or sometimes it is called programming. Sometimes this whole process from coding to flashing the microcontroller is called programming. And finally, you need a power supply to power the chip up. Otherwise, the programmer device will fail to flash the microcontroller. Although some programmers don't need a power supply to flash a microcontroller. There are a lot of MCU families on the market. It is obvious all of those have their own compiler software, programmer device, programmer software, setup and configuration. So you may ask your last question, question number eight, what is a programmer device and which one should I buy? These are AVR microcontrollers. This is one of programmers that can flash these MCUs. Its name is USB ASB S51 and it is available in online shops. There are other similar programmers out there like this one, this one, or this one. If you intend to work with AVR microcontrollers, I recommend buying a programmer like this one. These are cheap and handy. This is an ST-Link programmer which can flash STM32 microcontrollers. Also, I got this one which supports STM32 microcontrollers and some other MCUs. If you intend to use STM32 microcontrollers, this is a good choice. These two programmers are specialized for a certain MCU family. This one is for AVR flashing and this one is for STM32. I mean you can't use this one to flash an STM32 MCU or this one to flash an AVR. But if you buy a universal programmer like this TNM programmer, you can program many ICs using one programmer. For example, I am using this lovely TNM universal programmer to flash PIC, AVR and Atmel R microcontrollers while there are special programmers for each of them. The last point here is to learn how to connect an MCU to a programmer. Every MCU family has its own programmer, software, connection, setup and configuration. I can't explain all of them here in this video. So I will explain them in exclusive videos for each microcontroller. For now, it is enough to take a brief look at AVR and STM32 programmers. Let's look at these pins here. VCC, ground, 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 ground. These are for power rails and here MOSI, RST, STCA and MISO. These pins form the ISP port and almost every AVR chip support it. If you look at any AVR MCU pinout, you can find similar pins on the chip. I will explain AVR microcontrollers in the next video. Let's look at this one. These are RST, SWIM, SWCLK, SWDIO. These pins form the SWD protocol port. There are similar pins on STM32 microcontrollers. I will explain STM32 microcontrollers in detail in one of my next videos.
Up until now, you have learned basic and general information about MCUs. Each MCU family needs its own video, so I will explain each MCU family in a separate video. Next video is about AVR MCUs. In the next video, I will explain AVR MCUs in detail, introduce programmer and software needed to set up and configure them, and I will make a simple blinking LED project with AVR. Wait for that. So guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.